Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Rausen Pereira. A day after Larson and Tobro announced its plans to acquire up to 66% stake in Mindtree, the promoters of the Bengaluru-based IT company on Tuesday vowed to oppose the hostile takeover bid. Calling it a grave threat to the company, they said the acquisition lacked any strategic advantage. LNT reached an agreement with VG Siddhartha, the owner of Coffee Day, to acquire around 20% stake in Mindtree at 980 uh, rupees per share, aggregating to around 3,300 crore rupees. It has also placed an order to acquire an additional 15% stake from the open market. And apart from this, it wants to purchase 31% stake of the outstanding shares through an open offer. With 66% stake in Mindtree, LNT would become the majority shareholder. The board members of Mindtree, meanwhile, are expected to meet on Wednesday to consider the proposal of a buyback of shares of the company. On this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyse the first ever hostile takeover in the Indian IT sector. Joining me on the programme today are Srijan Pal Singh, IT expert, Shubhamoy Bhattacharji, consulting editor of The Business Standard, Manu Seth, former head of marketing South Asia, HTC, and Jitin Jain, director, Voyager, InfoSec. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. Manu Seth, I'd like to begin the program with you. First and foremost, let's try and understand and analyze why is this deal being termed as a hostile takeover? Yeah. One private company is taking over another private company. What's there to it more than that? See, uh... Even I would like to look at it from a perspective and as the program says big picture, I would like to look at it as a bigger picture on this takeover. See, hostile could be that they have their sentiments attached, they have their emotions attached. But we have to look at the practicality of this situation because in terms of the market expansion and in terms of the tie-ups these people are looking at, it makes sense that the kind of categories Mindtree is into and the kind of business LNT is into. If it joins hand, it gives a wider perspective, it gives a wider audience. So instead of having an immediate resistance, we should look at a long-term perspective to it. Mm. Rather, it should be taken from a perspective of pursuit of growth. I would say that over a period of time, the kind of blend that LNT, which is the largest stalwart in its own sector, where we should understand the kind of investments they do, they are very heavy on CapEx, they are very heavy on the infrastructures. But if they are diversifying into the category, which is more on software and services, where we see the growth happening, I think it makes a right blend. So hostile could be from a perspective that, oh, suddenly the sentiments are taken ab aback and people see that, oh, how someone can come up and buy this kind of a share in the segment in my complete entity. But we should respect this one of the majority stakeholder when he's looking out in the market. So it's like he's already having an intent to go out into the market for whatever his own reasons could be for divesting into other opportunities. And I think it's a good opportunity where a banner like LN LTI, which is being looking at all their services offering, it adds more value to their growth and to their expansion further. Right. Uh, Jitin Jain, is there anything illegal or anything out of place as far as this deal is concerned? Well, there is nothing illegal. It's absolutely, uh, you know, makes perfect business sense, but it is completely immoral and unethical. Hmm. You Why see, is that so? You know, it is, you see, you have to understand in last 10, 15 years, this entire IT boom is, uh, innovation boom in India happening because of startups. For 15 years, we've been called software superpower, but we were actually a bunch of, you know, uh, outsourced laborers of IT, which were doing jobs in Gurgaon and Noida. The original boom of IT innovation, and you know, uh, IT entrepreneurship has come in last five to seven years where Indian startups have, you know, uh, developing cutting edge technologies. Now, if you look at Mindtree and all these people, or you know, many other companies, these are all first generation entrepreneurs. These companies are built around you know uh, emotional attachments people have given up their personal lives they've put in their personal investments they've borrowed from families instead of banks when these startup loans are not available so you know the companies were built on very close foundations and then there's a culture of innovation there is you know people have put in so much of personal efforts they've worked you know around the clock without taking salaries and then when a company sustains when you start actually getting revenue people forget all those things everything is you know just termed as a business commodity you see you know uh, you are not acquiring uh, uh, is not willing to acquire 65 percent shares they are trying to acquire emotions of 2,000 20,000 people I think if you have that much of money you go out in the open market and hire from campuses those companies have been built around certain specific cultures I mean I'll give you an example if you go to many startups in Noida and Gurgaon 
uh, you are allowed to read blogs, watch news sites, watch cricket, uh, do Facebook, do WhatsApp chatting for two, three hours. Nobody questions. Uh, you are given work from home for a couple of days. You want to go on a holiday for you know one month. You want to work from home. It's fine. Uh, will Ellen do that? I mean, they'll ask you to come in proper dresses in terms of half knickers and joggies, right? They would want you to wear a business suit. The so startup may say that you know you can wear a business t-shirt and fine. You come in, you can work at two o'clock in the night to seven. You can choose your own shift. LNT may not allow that. There is a cultural difference. This is not joining hands. This is you are trying to suffocate someone just because you want to acquire certain IPR, you want to acquire certain business. You know, the, the, and I, I personally believe the end result would be of this acquisition will be broken hearts and a destroyed company like what happened with Air Deccan. The hmm. way Vijay Mali acquired. Right. I mean, don't do that. I mean, we are still in not in a stage where in India we we are not you know uh, accustomed and very comfortable with this hostile or you know uh, forceful takeovers. I would say we still have those emotional values attached to our companies to our share. We don't treat share as commodities. It is sort of our you know uh, uh, belongings and attachments here. You know there is a cultural difference. So the it, behemoth you know, it's not illegal. It's not illegal, but it's highly moral and ethical. So in the my opinion. the behemoths should give the smaller players you know their give space them room and, to and, breathe. and let them and let them evolve. And Obviously. let them develop by themselves is what you're suggesting. Yeah. Shubhamoy Bhattacharji, what is a hostile takeover? And are there any other examples from other sectors of a hostile takeover? Oh, there are plenty. I mean, LNT itself was a subject of hostile takeover long years ago with the yeah. Reliance Group, and it survived narrowly. It was a very difficult uh, phase through which LNT went, and uh, that was a time when they had uh, dissociated from the Builder Group. This so there was the three, <clears throat> the LNT on one side, the builders on one side, the uh, LIR Reliance Group on the other side, and it went on for quite some time. And uh, frankly speaking, it didn't, uh, uh, I mean, it wasn't a very pretty picture when that hostile thing, uh, takeover attempt on LNT had happened. Uh, there was also the hostile takeover, which was, well, um, you know, on the Obra Hotel, when uh, the Obra shares, uh, came on in the market and uh, again there were two sides to it the ITC group and the Reliance group uh, bidding for a piece of the Obrai control so there are plenty of those uh, yes um, is hostile takeovers whether they are right or wrong so that that's frankly a, a value judgment in fact I, I was very interested when I was listening to him very keenly and I realized that what Jitendra was saying that um, you know that that sort of makes me wonder that is would LNT actually like what they would be getting with the mine tree? So essentially, unlike a capital asset, uh, IT companies are not capital; they are labor. They are the human cap, human labor, human mind Skill. is the capital. LNT works in a sphere which is largely a capital-intensive sector, as is traditionally understood. This is, of course, it has got LNT infotech uh, as. Uh, Manu pointed out, but the point is, A, first of all, they're saying they're not trying to merge the two, Mindtree and this thing. Secondly, as this company, Mindtree, has a specific, very different work ethos. Why would, I, 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 I would sometimes do wonder why, why is LNT wouldn't to get into it? Is, was this a call from, just because it was a call from Siddharth, uh, of, uh, chairman of Cafe Coffee Day, that yeah, I have this shares and I want to sell it and because he's got a debt overhang. And this is a good pile to make, him, to, yeah. be able to, yeah. to be able to ease it out. So if that is so, then, you know, it makes a different picture altogether. Again, it's not illegal, but then uh, is LNT biting into something and then leaning to share erosion? Of course, it's not yet clear. For instance, the infrastructure, I mean, the investment advisory firm, IIS, uh, they have actually given a neutral note. They have said, in fact, the note is very interesting. What their note says is that they are not siding either with LNT or with the mine tree. But what they're saying is, in this case, which way should the vote go will actually be decided by the independent directors. Mm. And I think that's a very, very balanced idea because they're saying that the ramifications of what this business would be going through would be best understood by them rather than anybody outside. Right. So shareholders right. outside in the market, you and I, if we have bought shares into a mine tree, we may not be able to judge at this stage, ab initio, I mean, which way uh, the deal would, would actually... Uh, I mean, uh, what, we, what would be good for the company concerned? Whether whether mine tree itself would benefit, because it's not capital that it, the mine tree essentially is short of. So, what would mine tree actually benefit out of this? 
and what would LNT benefit out of this? Right, that's important. That that's something that we'll analyze as well. I'll just come to you, Jitin, before that because Sri Sri Pal Singh has been very patiently listening to all of you. So let me get a reaction from him as well. You know, Sri at the end of the day, Mindtree is a listed company. So. Aren't there any rules that need to be followed? Doesn't a regulator come in at some point in time? What about SEBI and so on and so forth? Uh, Frank, see, uh, this entire deal is not illegal, as has already been pointed out. Uh, there is a shareholder, uh, Mr. Siddharth, who happens to be the largest uh, single point shareholder, who has decided for reasons uh, which uh, have been circulating in the media, whether he has to uh, furnish some money to the, uh, the uh, enforcement uh, issues, the tax uh, uh, liabilities, or some other investment he has to make, we're not sure. But he needs the money and he wants to offload his stake. That is perfectly legal. I don't think SEBI has anything to do with that. Where I think we need to look, uh, what Jitin was pointing out, is uh, there is a difference between being illegal and immoral. And the problem is that uh, as this is a service industry, and service industries rely exclusively on the people who work there and the relationships which they forge uh, with their clients. Now, in case of Mindtree, the, one of the biggest clients they have is about 20% of their revenue. Now, if uh, this hostile takeover goes through, uh, then, uh, uh, then one thing which LNT which has to immediately do is to get rid of the top management. That would really affect the client relation and the employee relationship both. In a way, I think uh, what has more than the legal aspect, more than what SEBI could do, is uh, I think LNT has started to ride a tiger. And it doesn't know how to get off of because I don't think they anticipated this amount of backlash, uh, which will uh, come through from within Mindtree, within Mindtree employees. And now they've committed too deep. Uh, if you look at the numbers uh, in terms of the shareholding pattern, that is an interesting point uh, one must also look at. Uh, it's not that the deal has gone through. Uh, Siddhartha owns only about 20, 21% of the stake in Mindtree. The, uh, even if they don't reach the 66%, they still need an additional 30%, uh, which they need to buy out. In the open market, in the stock exchange, they've already LNT has already set out uh, brokers to buy uh, Mindtree stocks from open market. The public holds only about 17, 18%. So even if they were to convert half of that, you still have about 20% which LNT has to pick, even to reach 50%, which is the majority. That will come only with FII. So foreign institutional investors hold about 40% stake in Mindtree, and uh, and there has always there's already been a talk where uh, these investors have been saying that the premium which is being paid, which is about 18 rupees uh, above the market price which Siddhartha got, is not good enough. So I think uh, SEBI should look at, uh, or would at some stage look into it, whether uh, investor uh, value is being destroyed. Right. Uh, but again, as Jitin was pointing out, the, the issue of illegality is really not the question. The immorality is an issue. And in long term, it doesn't make sense uh, for either the shareholders uh, of LNT or of uh, of my tree. Okay. Yes, Jitan, you want to add something? There was a very interesting question uh, which was raised that, you know, how would LNT benefit or how would my tree benefit? Mm. You know, LNT is saying that, look, we are not a, we may be infrastructure major, but we have got two IT companies, we have got LNT Infotech, we have got LNT Technology Services. So this is not actually a new, uh, you know, sphere we are getting into, you know, we'll have a collaboration of minds, we are offering, we have a wide portfolio of uh, clients, we have got different product ranges, and Mindtree would benefit by having this wider audience and more products. You know, all these arguments were, are the similar arguments which are given by China while they, you know, took on Tibet and they wanted to, when they want to acquire uh, Taiwan. You see that you know you will benefit. We are a large growing economy. Your economy will benefit. Look, please realize this is not a piece of land you're trying to acquire. It's a territory with its own population, which does not want to you know come into your governance. If the employees, those two twenty thousand employees, do not majority of them, if they do not want to uh, get into that culture of LNT, you see, when somebody applied for a job in a campus, LNT pays you know uh, almost equivalent money when you go and apply why would you join a startup because you want to learn you want to grow you want a different culture you want a different experience you want a different knowledge you know as a, you ask a guy in the college where would you want to join Mindtree or LNT he has made his choice now even if LNT acquires they, they will always make another choice to leave Mindtree if LNT acquires what will you do if you lose those 10,000 great beautiful minds what will you do with the company I mean I'm sure you don't want chairs and tables and some computers you know lying in your inventory so the bigger question is that let's not you know within India it's not a foreign company it's an Indian company let's not destroy those values let's not destroy that world culture let's not stifle let's not bully around Let's be respectful to innovation. Let's be respectful to small players. 
I mean, uh, you are doing this to them today. Tomorrow, somebody else will come from the foreign market, will do it to you. Like, you know, Walmart came, they had a good deal with Flipkart, and the very moment the deal materialized, they asked Binis and Bansals to go. I mean, it's not a nice experience. I mean, I'm sure the moment this deal happens, they will ask the, you know, the promoters and founders to leave the company. How will that be? I mean, uh, for your own channels, for your own, you know, private stuff we have built, it's very painful when you are asked to go. You ask Captain Gopinath what was the experience when he was, you know, asked to move out. So please don't do this. My only suggestion is that don't don't treat it as commodities and business. This is values and emotions. Right, right. That having been said, yeah. How do smaller companies like you know Mindtree and others, like mentioned by Ajit and you know Flipkart and so on and so forth, how do they insulate or protect themselves from some of the other bigger companies or the behemoths? Do you believe that we need to have some kind of a policy in place? What is it really, Manu? See, I would uh, recommend that we should look at it as from a growth perspective. There's an opportunity to grow. See, everyone comes up, you start up an ecosystem. We talk about freedom, culture. It's largely more driven by emotions when you drive the ecosystem. But when you have to scale up, you need definitely a team. You need partners. Definitely you need a muscle power. You need the reach in terms of the international markets. You re need a reach in terms of the different segments. So I think it should be framed in a right manner where you can identify the right parameters where the emotions doesn't get hurt. We say and we talk about emotional intelligence, we talk about emotional quotients, we talk about people and processes today. But at the same point of time, it is all about scalability and growth. Because if you look at it from a startup culture, it has its own plus and minus. But I would say on this platform, it should not be only termed as an hostile. But yes, if we can refine some policies in terms of the independent stakeholders who are there and if they see the growth and if they see the marry, uh, marriage to happen between the kind of value that LNT brings on the table and that what Mindtree has evolved over a period of time and they, their share value has also grown up. Their growth has also grown by 10 double digits over the period of time. So both in their own respective categories have done well. Hmm. Let's see how do we have the right marriage with the right team. But the scalability and the growth opportunity should not be uh, I would say discounted over the period of time. So this is a natural process of growth yes. is what you're suggesting. Both parties So we have to need overcome to emotions emotion, over a period yeah. of time. It's like a tough battle where we have to go beyond the emotions. Put aside the differences, yeah. take, put your best feet forward and Absolutely. move forward is what you're suggesting. Yes. Uh, Shubhuma, you know, LNT now has gone ahead and said, made an open offer to acquire about 31% stake in Mindtree. So what is an open offer really and how does it work? Just put it in perspective for us. Well, it's simply that uh, once you've made a uh, takeover bid according to the SEBI regulations, you have to buy also additional shares from the market and the percentages are given. What the SEBI basically says is that those investors who had invested into Mindtree with a particular point of view should be given the option to exit. So that's what the open offer does. It cleans and it gives a minority investors a chance to move out if they want to do. It's also a ticklish thing because what it happens is it raises the stakes for the company which is trying to buy in that they have to also have money and the ability to be able to buy shares from the market. In this case, as Srijan pointed out, 40% of the shareholding is portfolio investor. In fact, 87% of it is actually held by institutional investors. So there isn't really much of a float available. Hmm. So this, uh, so it will be difficult call for LNT. What I'm also concerned is. Uh, I mean, I, I, I take on board what Manu is saying, but I just wanted this is about 10,000, about 11,000 crore worth uh, deal that if it comes through. LNT uh, in the construction sphere sector, I mean, you know, there's a lot of churn happening in India in the uh, brick and mortar sector. Uh, LNT has also been hit to some extent and all that. Is it saying that, you know, the growth prospects there are actually looking dim, so yeah. it wants to, you know, sort of weave away into some other sector? In which case, um, going beyond the issue of who actually is, uh, whether which companies would suffer, I'm, I'm, I'm slightly getting a bit concerned that probably then there isn't that many good opportunities for investing in the construction sector in India, so to say at this point, because this is a signal from India's largest construction company. And if they're saying that their surplus cash, they would rather deploy in this thing, mm. then it does show that the revival in the construction sector that we are talking about is possibly not coming through immediately. It's probably a couple of quarters down the line, in which case LNT wants to move into something that they can do better. Uh, and that definitely makes me uh, concerned about the shape of the economy. 
that it's it's uh, going beyond just the corporate battle about why an unrelated sector company, even if it has got, because the LNT is not known for it being an IT company, why would it want to get into this space so aggressively? It's uh, it's that that's something that that I would like to yeah, think it a bit more. In interesting that you brought that up, Shrijan Pal Singh. You know why is LNT so interested in mine tree? What does it stand to gain really at the end of the day? And what does LNT bring to the table? See, I think uh, LNT has been trying to get into the IT space for a while. Uh, yeah. If you remember, in uh, I think 2008-2009, when uh, Satyam was Satyam. up for uh, you know off, after all the uh, process it went through, Satyam was up for sale. Uh, Tech Mahindra and LNT were both trying to bid, and ultimately it was Tech Mahindra who ended up with Satyam, and LNT lost that opportunity. So LNT has been trying to get into the IT space for a while. The reason is, of course, uh, anybody's uh, bet is that IT is the growing sector of India. Mine Tree is one of the fastest growing com com uh, companies uh, of the mid-tier sector in IT. And it will be a great value uh, for LNT to diversify into the IT space, uh, which it's been trying to do for a while. Uh, so what does LNT bring into Mine Tree? Well, if this deal goes through, uh, in terms of cash surplus, LNT would obviously bring in a lot of investments uh, uh, for that sector. Uh, but I don't think that is enough uh, to replace the intellectual manpower, the IPRs, and the culture which Mindtree has uh, has built over such a long time. What I was trying to raise, Frank, is one of the questions you had raised, uh, which I thought uh, went unanswered. This deal is, is a classic example of what today's entrepreneurs and startups need to learn uh, when they start their journey today. Uh, Mindtree uh, ended up giving about 21% uh, stake uh, to Siddharth, who probably has no background in terms of IT. He's, he comes from a you know, a background of coffee growers and, and, of course, has done very well in that sector. But once you end up uh, partnering uh, and giving such large stakes to investors who probably do not really uh, gel with the entire business model which you are following, uh, this is what you end up with. So I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, someone, a 23-year or 25-year-old uh, young boy, girl who's trying to start up today and build a company over age must understand you need to get the right investor. Otherwise, you end up in problems like this. No, it's an important point that you raised about getting the right investor. But a 23 or a 25 year old will take any investment that comes I mean, comes his way. Problem with yeah, India, you know, the government has made available 1,000 crore, you know, corpus for startup funds through SIDBI and all those things. But you see, majority of investments which are coming in Indian startups are coming through these private investors. Private you know, see, investment. people have made huge money in different sectors. I mean, I would not name what kind of people. And everybody is trying to become an angel investor in India. And they are the people who, who have got big money and it's easier to bring in investments from these individual guys rather than, you know, these institutional investors. Mm -hmm. uh, because the moment an institutional investor come in, they won't play a place on the board, they want you to change the culture of company, they want to have those marketing staff, that and all. But if you get some investment from an individual guy who's got some ideal, uh, you know, uh, good amount of money which is lying idle, he simply invests and he was some returns at the end of the day, he doesn't interfere in the running of company. And that is one of the reasons probably they sold a big stake to, you know, uh, Siddharth when, uh, and at that point of time he may have, that uh, money he invested may have been a good amount of investment. But today they are paying off it, but that is happening with all of us in India. I mean, many of the companies I know, we've all got uh, these private guys who've invested in our companies. But that does not mean that we'll be, you know, uh, we'll be, you know, forced to uh, sell up our uh, entire souls and investments in this way. But, it's, uh, you know, it, there was an interesting point which has been made is about that, you know, f around 40% around holding which has been held by the uh, FIIs. Mm -hmm. You see, you know, these companies, in, uh, there's an interesting point uh, w when the co-founders have written a letter to LNT and they have specifically mentioned that, you know, the co-founders, promoters, employees, along with FIIs, we have got reservations. So they are pointing out that even FIIs have got reservations about this deal. So I don't know if, if LNT would be acquire, uh, will be able to acquire, acquire. and convince them to sell that stake. Sure. So, you know, it may so happen that LNT might end up acquiring 35% and they might you know get uh, uh, you know get themselves blocked at that and that will be a disaster situation that you know you will have a stakeholder which has got 35 percent who doesn't have a majority stake in the overall company but still it is one of the largest stakeholders and that stakeholder has got huge chunk of money at the back who has done a hostile takeover bid and there'll be a rift always right there'll be always a threat or of, uh, again uh, you know another hostile takeover bid so that having been said what does it mean for the indian it sector Manu? See, there were some good points which came out that uh, we have to really look at the right investors. We have to look at that souls and the cultures, what we are talking about, the emotions, 
there is a scope it is expanding services as a category is really expanding but we have to really marry out the best results possible results for the growth of the company for the growth of the future investment that's where i would like to sum up the things right shubhoy yeah. will we see more such takeovers in the day to days to come you think look right now when in my newspaper in most newspapers the news that we all all get is about bankruptcy in the middle of that frankly a takeover news actually sounds rather nice mm -hmm. it actually makes the seems that there's some sector where the valuations are rising where people business as usual has been restored companies are willing to bet on each other that 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 actually sound makes you feel much better uh, irrespective of the i mean of of the of the of what happens to the companies so that so the, so that extent i i th i think it's 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 it sounds much better to read than 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 that about and track than the stories about the repeated and more bankruptcies that are happening across the board across sectors silver lining then at the end of the day absolutely <laughs> but what options does uh, mindtree have going forward really i mean point is that their investors seem to be very firm as it is pointing out i mean if 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 the if the fias are really there stuck in sticking in with them and you can see the most of the investors are brought uh, even the domestic investors are uti mutual funds and couple of them uh, which essentially have a habit of uh, you know behaving along with the fias then i think uh, what he's saying is right there won't be adequate shares up for sale right. in which case lnt might be in a difficult situation of uh, not i mean it has got a veto power in the board sure but beyond that it it won't be able to move right closing comment now from srijan pal singh you know srijan we've seen consolidation take place in other sectors as well in the recent past telecom sector being one of those key sectors so is that what's happening to the it sector as well well you can't equate those two uh, frank because uh, it sector consolidation uh, so telecom sector consolidations were not hostile they were business needs uh, which both the parties agreed to historically uh, outside india of course this is the first uh, in it sector in uh, india but uh, in us there's a lot of hostile takeovers which happen in many sectors and the track record of hostile takeovers in us has not been uh, very good at all um, the uh, times warner aol uh, being the classic deal which uh, you know uh, made uh, both the companies lose shareholder value where i see this going is that uh, lnt has already committed to uh, this uh, too far and too deep to come out of it now uh it will be stuck with this uh, 21 and uh, i don't agree with the fact that you know fiis or diis uh, the mutual funds and all they're not uh, they're there for a good price so the the argument has been that the 18 rupee premium which uh, has been offered to siddharth is what they think is not worth enough and they want more premium so i think lnt would either have to up the ante and offer them a bigger price uh, so there'll be a bit of negotiation between the fiis and the uh, the mfi the mutual fund institutions and uh, lnt going forward even if lnt is stuck with the uh, 20 30% odd stake i think mine tree would be under a constant threat uh, from lnt and eventually lnt will have its way uh, in a way both the companies will lose uh, stakeholder value and shareholder value uh, in the deal uh, and uh, i think uh, you know companies which operate largely on human relations on human intellectual power should avoid this kind of hostility this does not spell well for either of the companies all right on that note then Call it a wrap on this edition of the Big Picture. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. That's it from me. See you again next time.